Hello, Jeremy here, and I am going to demonstrate the abstract brush pack that I've created especially for Corel Painter 2020. There's 15 different brush variants here that I'm going to use, and I'm just going to go through all of them in the process of creating an abstract artwork. So let's talk about where to start with an abstract. And the first thing to share is that there are no recipes. And by the nature of painting, expressive painting, and especially abstraction where you're not trying specifically to depict or represent something uh, in terms of a scene or a subject matter, then really there are no recipes. And whatever you do is fine. And it's going to reflect who you are and your vision and feelings. So what I'm going to enter into with you and share with you in this process is a dialogue. And as painters, we're inventors. And we're inventing something on that canvas that didn't exist before. So whatever I show you in this video, uh, I want you to do something totally different. And really, the, f the value of sharing what I'm going to share is to give you a sense of the brush variants, what they look like, how they might be used, but I want you to follow your own dialogue with the canvas and with the brush strokes, and you're going to end up somewhere totally different to me. So in terms of starting points, you can evolve from uh, something such as a photograph or a memory or by observation, something in front of you, or we can just start much you know more rawly than that just with a, a brush stroke which itself generates ideas for the next brush stroke and so on memory can be an interesting thing you might have seen something where there was a dash of this color or something that caught your eye and is in your memory so you could use that as a launching point so what i'm going to do is go through the brushes in order that they appear they're uh, listed alphabetically, so I'll just go from the A to the W, so to speak. My canvas is a 36 by 36 inch at 150 pixels per inch square. One thing that you might want to consider doing is just at least having a color other than white there. And so I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment of color here and do a fill. So that's edit, fill, fill with current color. And there we go. So we've got something there other than pure white. And if you want to give a little bit of grit to your surface, again, before you start painting, you might want to put in some sort of a texture. And you could just pick a paper texture and apply it. I'll show you how. So we'll just go and get the media panels papers. That was from the window menu. And we'll just go and pick something with an interesting structure here to serve as a backdrop here. Now, I've got Madness. I always like a name like Madness. Let's see what this looks like. If we go to the effects, surface control, apply surface texture. And we'll use the paper to apply the texture. Ah, I rather like it. And maybe we can exaggerate it a bit and say, OK, apply a little bit of all over. It's almost like confetti, isn't it? Let's go to crazy. So I'm using the command option shortcut on a Mac, control alt shook shortcut on a PC. And so this is basically like marbleizing the surface as you run the brush over it. Then we have extrusion, which extrudes the paint is there. Ah, got the globula. I'm also keeping an eye on the harmonies here. And when I see harmonies that I like, I'm locking up the, that particular harmony so I can use the swatches like this. What I like about this um, globula is the way that as I paint with it, it changes color. So it's got color variability built in. If you have a look at the color variability sliders here, you can see it's got quite a lot of hue, saturation, and value variability. 
you can see the wonderful texture. I just love those textural details. This one is called reflection because of the way that it sort of pulls paint in from both sides. Ah, and then we get the scrabbly. Well, let's have some fun with scrabbly. This one has a lot of color variability as well in the hue variation. And as it goes big, it also gets soft. So you can do very quick gestural work. Then we turn to the scratcher. Wow! My gosh, look at that. Wow! Wow! This is amazing. Ooh, then we're going to do some scribbling. And notice that I'm varying gesture here, sometimes big and dramatic, sometimes smaller and busier. It's called suretize. And so what you're seeing happening is it's taking what's there and giving it a sort of bubbly, almost surah feel. You can get carried away, it's very easy to make a mess, but making a mess and being playful is part of this process. This reminds me a little bit of fireworks, sort of sprinklers. That was spiky. And here's going to be an interesting one. I will create a different layer for this. That's called Spyro. It literally makes things act as if they're spiraling around. So. And then we get to threads. This is a quite a nice one. Let's make it quite big. And let's look for the dramatic gesture. And then finally, the last one is whisk. We're going to add a little bit of whisking around. And I've put a couple of references here. Um, one in the mixer pad, which is Hans Hoffman's painting. And actually, the name of that is almost as good as uh, the painting itself and that is called art like love is dedication and i you know really think that when you're working on projects like this um, work on several at the same time and just let the process go you know work on them put it to, aside come back to it and you will be amazed at what developed but i'm just taking risk i'm just diving in there and um, i really encourage you to to take the risk as well i'm going to Select all here, and I'm going to go copy and paste. I'm going to go to the canvas. We're going to fill it with black canvas. Edit fill. Fill with black. Let's turn off the visibility of the top layer first. And let's just do a few things on that background canvas. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, let's do a scribble. A suretize down there. An extru extrusion up there, a spiro down here, and then let's turn back on this layer on top, and let's play a moment with some composite methods. The difference is very interesting, a bit computery. And let's choose underpainting and experiment a bit, add a bit of contrast, which certainly pumps up the uh, image, also add a little saturation. And then finally go to the equalize and bring in the black and the white points to just again add some uh, strength and contrast to the image. It's a further stage of exploration of these abstract brushes. One thing we can do is create a new layer above the abstract that we just created. And what I did was, I'll just turn this layer visibility off and just do this again. So you can see the steps. So I went to the new layer icon there and clicked it. So there's a new transparent layer. I selected black in the black corner of the value saturation triangle, which is independent of the hue. It's still black. 
and then I did a fill using edit fill or command F on a Mac or control F on a PC fill with current color okay a hundred percent and then that layer I turned the composite method from default to gel so what's key about gel is that when you paint white on um, gel it's transparent so if I use this globular brush you can see through it it's pretty cool eh? so going back to what I was already working on which was this layer up here I can use any brush that puts color onto the surface and I can literally paint with white and bring through the abstract that's underneath and you can think of this a little bit like a scratch board when you're a kid and you cover a uh, paper with color and then you put uh, wax crayon in black over the top and then scratch through it so we're essentially doing something very similar here and with that, I'm going to call it a day and wish you tons of fun experimenting with these abstract brushes in Corel Painter 2020. I can't wait to see what you create and just let yourself flow. So don't worry, you're inventing stuff, it's a dialogue. Do a whole bunch of these, maybe do a whole series and see what comes out of it. You will be amazed. Thank you.